Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. A shot of entertainment to the head. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the entertainment. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Everett Lee Show podcast. I am Everett Lee. Quick shout out to everyone who follows me on Twitter. You can follow me at the Everett Lower Score Lee, Facebook.com slash the Everett Lee. Click that thumbs up. And of course, Podcast City Network, the home of the Everett Lee Show. Head over to podcastcity.net for this program and much, much more content on podcastcity.net. And it's not possible without the supporters of podcasting network here on the Everett Lee show I'd like to give a shout out to city limits tap room in Deland, Florida home of draft day and official host of podcasting network live events head over to city limits tap room in Deland, Florida for brew on tap food menu with grilled cheese is excellent and much much more indoor and outdoor sporting events Stage out back for live events over at City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida. And if you're looking for that CD, vinyl, cassette you may have lost, Atlantic Sound Records may have it. Head over to International Boulevard in Daytona Beach or hit them up on Facebook on facebook.com slash Atlantic Sounds. They will hook you up and even order something that you don't have. And Sport Sanity Customs. Head over to SportsSandyCustoms.com to get that Podcast City Network t-shirt that you see the crew and shows of Podcast City Network wear. So hit them up on SportsSanity.com, Customs.com. And, of course, our new logo, our year two logo of Podcast City Network was designed by Three Count Design. Hit them up on Facebook. They will design any video and graphic designs at your needs. So hit them up and you will get a 10% discount if you mention you listen to Podcast City Network. And of course, we want to give a shout out to Kentucky Zone Wrestling. Shout out to the true master of wrestling ring music, Hurricane J.J. McGuire over on Kentucky Zone Wrestling. Hit them up on Facebook and check out the latest promos and events Coming at you on Kentucky Zone Wrestling. And it's all brought to you by PodcastCity.net. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I have on the line right now, he is patiently standing by, I have none other than Kentucky Zone Wrestling's own crutch. How you doing there tonight? I'm making it, man. I'm doing pretty well. You? Oh, I'm pretty good, man. Just kicking back, having a cold one, and just enjoying this weather here. <laughs> here. Yeah, Daytona Beach, man, 80 degrees today. I'm glad that we don't have no more cold weather. <laughs> you know, I don't mind the cold weather. I'm a, I'm a ginger myself, so uh, I burn easy. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, he- I heard, I heard that's, that's what happens. I had a couple friends that... Actually, they do get sunburnt pretty bad, and it it stinks. But you know what? I know uh, when I had Hurricane J.J. McGuire down here last week celebrating the one-year anniversary of Podcast C Network, he mentioned that back home it was like 32 degrees. What's the weather there uh, where you're at right now? It's cold, ain't it? Uh, it uh, it uh, it's actually been pretty warm today. It's been a little rainy, though. So. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's not yeah. bad. That's not bad. So, crutch. So, with the weather and everything going on and where you're at, that's one of the questions I'd like to ask you. I want to kick off here. And every wrestler has a journey and a path they go down. And where did yours start out at? Where did you grow up at? Uh, I grew up in a little place called um, Manchester, Kentucky, Clay County. Uh, small, small area, um, but it's home, you know. 
born and raised. Nice, nice. What uh, at what age did you get into wrestling? Oh man, I want to say I was about um, two or three when my dad flipped on um, Monday Night Raw. And I immediately wanted to shave my head, and I begged for a uh, black leather vest because, man, I was stone cold crazy. <laughs> nice, nice. What were your What were your, some of your early memories of the Texas rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin? Oh man, you got the infamous uh, beer truck that he drove into the arena. <laughs> um, and then uh, what was the thing there that he? Um, the Zamboni or whatever it's called. Yeah, the Zamboni, man. The Zamboni. Yeah. That was that was that was gold right there, man. That that was definitely gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of great moments. I mean, uh, anything with Stone Cold is, uh, I mean, it's it's a masterpiece. It's gold. I mean, arguably the greatest wrestler of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely during the Attitude Era, that so much so much great talent and stuff came out of out of that era right there of course texas rattlesnake stone cold steve austin and you had the rock you had triple h you had mankind it was just a great time in wrestling man it definitely he's, was he's undertaker too, man. undertaker's been a part of a lot of it he's he's the man yeah yeah you definitely can't uh you definitely can't forget about the undertaker <laughs> you definitely can't and what to uh, with <laughs> watching the Attitude Era, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and all the great ones during that era. What, um, when did you decide to become a wrestler? Oh, I was hooked immediately. Uh, I, I was ready right then and there. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, state of Kentucky, I think you, uh, you have to be the age of 18, and you got to get a uh, wrestler's license. So um, unfortunately, I had to wait till I was 18 before I could start. So that was... Uh, I think 2012 when I actually got started wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard I heard that Kentucky basically is like the only state that does have a where you have to get license because I was talking with the uh, JJ last week when he was down here and he mentioned that yeah, Kentucky, you got to have a license. He he even have to ha has to have a license. You know, I mean, that's yep. just that's any anything to do with wrestling. It is. Yeah. G going going through that to get the license is that uh, is that um they make you like do a bunch of things or what what do they actually make you do to get your license? Is it a you know? Well, I know uh, I know you got to pass a physical uh -huh. and um that you uh I know they randomly drug test and uh, you basically you have to you have to get the physical and you have to get a uh, wrestling promoter to sign off for your license. And see, that's the hard part because not just anyone's going to sign off for your wrestling license unless you're trained. So that's kind of a good thing because it keeps a lot of people from, you know, oh, I'm, I, I can do this. I, I'm meant to do this. I'm a wrestler. But, you know, they don't know squat until they get in the ring. So it's kind of a good thing because that promoter can, uh, you know, well, you know, I'll sign off for your license, but, you you got you got to train you know you got you got to come with me work at my shows you know pay your dues you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah you definitely you definitely do that way that way you can't have like some amateur come in there and actually like do something yep. and actually hurt like uh exactly. like Jim Cornette would say outlaw promotion <laughs> and some <Yep>. backyard <laughs> wrestler you know yeah yeah so I mean it, it's 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 a bit of a good thing I mean. It's a good and bad thing, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. I found that really fascinating. I, I did when I was told about that. I was like, really? It's you, good. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Now, becoming a wrestler and getting your license, what, what, what promotions did you work for? Well, um, I started out with uh, TSW. They're about uh, roughly an hour away in the uh, Corbin, Kentucky area, mm -hmm. uh, traditional Southern wrestling, TSW. Yeah. Uh, I wrestled there for a year and a half, two years before I started going other places. Um, I went to uh, WCCW, uh, Wildcat Championship Wrestling. Uh 
Uh-huh. Uh, N-O-W, New Origins Wrestling. Right. Uh, I made it to KBW, and, man, that's really where I started. Uh, that's really, you know, even though I started at TSW, KBW is really where um, I started to lift lift up, like pick up, and, you know, get get some stuff under me, you know, and start, you know, kind of getting a little bit of a name because uh, that's where I developed the uh, the Hatter character. That's cool. And That's uh, cool. yeah, but uh, from KZW, uh, I went to uh, the World Wrestling Alliance out toward um, Owensboro, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and man, they're phenomenal too. I, I gotta throw them. I gotta mention them. World Wrestling Alliance, the WWA. Right. Right. But I owe a lot of my career so far to uh, KZW for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, K. KCW, that's from what I watched on Facebook and what I pulled up on YouTube, the matches, man. I mean, it's just it's just great. It's fantastic and stuff. What was in before you came to KCW, what was some of your uh, early memories of being in the promotions, uh working working in those promotions? Um experimenting with the face paint and developing my character uh-huh. and just uh learning a lot. Um, from other other wrestlers who have been uh, in the business longer than me, um, we got a guy named uh, I got a I got a name drop uh, Ryan Dukey. Uh He's a little bit of a local local name, I guess you could say. He's a great guy. Um, riding uh, riding in the back seat with him and a few of the other boys to shows and just listening to them give advice and uh, you know picking their brains that uh that's one of the fondest memories you know as far as early on in my career that's um, cool. but yeah really just developing the character and just um uh, picking the brains of uh the older older gentlemen in the locker room and stuff that that was the best memories for me anyways just learning educating myself on the sport and the, the business yeah it's it's always good. I assume it's always good to actually pick pick a veteran's brain and learn what works and what don't work and do experiment and try and yeah. stuff. I do have to make a comment on the face paint, man. I love it. I love it. It kind of reminds me of uh, Jeff Hardy. It reminds me of, of Jeff Hardy, the Enigma. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, I used to be a real big Jeff Hardy fan. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, still a, I'm still a fan, but I used to be a huge Jeff Hardy fan. A uh, huge, huge Sting fan. Um, yes. But I, I'm really, uh, I really like the, uh, as far as in ring goes, I like. Uh, I know it's a little contra controversy, but uh, Chris Benoit, Chris yes. Jericho, Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero. You know the the wrestlers. You know the mm. the underdog, the actual wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. You said you mentioned you mentioned a lot of my favorites right there, Sting. One of my favorites there. I love the bleach blonde war paint eighties nineties. Yeah. And, and surfer. Then, surfer sting. <laughs> yeah, surfer sting. I love that. I love that. And I especially love the the crow, the dark sting, how he reinvented his character because it was that that right there was such a good moment in WCW there because he had that feud with the NWO with uh, Hulk Hogan there. Oh yeah, and he was in the rafters for a whole year. He didn't wrestle a match for an entire year. Nah, man. Nah, he didn't. He didn't wrestle for a whole year and he didn't say nothing. He just stalked. He just stalked just, just like, you know, like a, any type of like bird would with its prey, the crow, you know, he just stalked his prey for a whole year. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He'd show up, come come from the rafters. He'd come in from just anywhere, from underneath the ring. Out of nowhere, he, absolutely. I know. It just point didn't say nothing. His action spoke. And until when yeah, he, he he said more with a facial expression than most most uh, most wrestlers could say with you know two or three minute um, mic time. He said more with his facial expression than anyone could with two or three minutes on the mic. Oh yeah, yeah. He definitely, he definitely did. That's what I loved. He didn't say nothing, and then until Starcade '97, when he went up against Hollywood Hogan and took the world title, that was such a great match right there. 
It definitely was. I'm a fan of any Sting match. I'm a fan of, but uh, I really love the old school uh, back to Hollywood. The uh, the, the blonde uh, Sting there. The uh, anything with him and Flair back in the day was just magic, man. I, I love I love watching uh, Sting and Flair go at it. It's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was definitely phenomenal, especially with with flair that I mean he had a good feud with the dirtiest player in the game and of course mm-hmm. he they had, had hope. so much chemistry too, man. They, they just they uh they got along so well in the ring they uh had they just had so much chemistry it was it, great matches there's not a bad match no no there's not a bad match there's not definitely not a bad match and especially when he had hogan's back there before he turned when he turned uh heel when he turned his back on everyone and it's crazy just thinking about Hogan because what, um, what's a heel? What's a heel? What's bad a heel? Guy. Bad guy. Bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're messing me, man. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you messing me. What's a heel? I'm like, really? No, man. I'm, I was yeah, like, I'm, he's got to be. I'm, I'm trying to protect the business. I'm trying to protect the business. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was like, he's got to be pulling my fucking leg, man. <laughs> that was good. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I, I do a lot of people like that on the uh, on the internet and stuff through Facebook and any other social media. They'll be talking about a a heel or a face. I'm just like, what is a heel? Yeah, I mean, because with the wrestling business, you know, so there's so many wrestling terms and you know, wrestling terminology that's uh, you know out. So many people know about it now, and it's just, you know, it's not really as protected as, you know, you hear the older the older wrestlers talk about, you know, it's like, oh, it used to be uh, so protected back in the day, but now it's not. You know, they're right. I mean, mm-hmm. Fans know what a heel on face is, and it's 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 a little uh, it's a little disappointing when they uh they are they are already in on the uh, the business. They know what, you know, they know the terminology, and uh, they're they're smart to the business. So I mean. It, it, it's kind of disappointing, but uh, it's always nice when they do forget and they get lost in the show and they think, oh, Crutch is really mad as a hatter. So, yeah, yeah. that's always nice. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. I, I definitely have to say that when the curtain call with <laughs> Nash, Hall, Michaels, and Hunter at Madison Square Garden, oh, yeah. I, to me, people's like, when did Kayfabe die? I believe kayfabe died that night right there because when the curtain call after that right there things changed. And of course you get the internet. You get the internet yeah. that it just Oh yeah, the internet's the biggest problem for sure. Mm-hmm. It is. There's too many uh, terminology uh smarks. I I can't stand the smarks. I cannot stand the smarks. And I picked up a lot of terminology just talking with with wrestlers and people who's yeah. been in the business and stuff, and you know, like uh, Mr. McGuire there, and yeah. talking with. I heard a guy once in the locker room say, uh, "You know, kayfabe may be dead, but we don't flaunt it." Right. And you know that 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 just that spoke that spoke volumes, man. Because as a wrestler, he you know it's it's true. You know, it may be dead. The fans may know about it, but. We shouldn't flaunt it. We should still try to protect it. That way, you know, they're still getting entertained and they're still buying into it. You know, they're still believing it. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, that like like he said, it may be dead, but let's not flaunt it. You know, let's, let's continue to try to protect it. You know, what's left of it, anyways. Right, right, definitely, definitely. Because when I go when I go to a wrestling show, when I go there, and when when two opponents or tag match come out and the crowd starts booing or cheering for one or the other, then I know who yeah. I'm going to cheer for. I know who I'm going to boo for. And in, in that moment right there, if it's a 10 minute match, 15 minute or 20 minute match, I get sucked into that world as a fan and I enjoy it. Yep. And I don't, even, I don't even think about you know what what this person does when he's not in the ring. I don't think about what this person does when he's in 
backstage or what at that i'm caught yeah. in sucked in at that moment right there of the story no, being told where you are completely lost in the moment you're 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 captivated you know by what's going on in front of you you, you you're yeah. you're bald you know you, you're buying into what what you're seeing you're lost yeah yeah you definitely you definitely are and that's what's entertaining about it and that's what i love about it because for that 15 10 15 20 minutes or 30 minutes or hour or just how long the show's going on, I am connected, or not connected, I don't know what the term would be, sucked in into the story, what's going on, being told, you know, this person has a beef with this person, and so forth, and I'm just there just to see some really good, really good wrestling. I definitely am. Yep. I definitely am, and I I love it, and I do enjoy it, and I do join going online and checking out different promotions and seeing what's out there and seeing who's who's doing what and what's what's basically going on. Well, if you like looking at new promotions, um, back to uh, WWA, World Wrestling Alliance, they do have a YouTube channel, um, WWA Is Now. Um, I, know, I don't think KZW has a YouTube channel yet. I think we are in the works. Of doing something but wwa is now man they have an incredible you know production team up there that's taking care of everything the lights the work um it's a great show and i mean they have the storylines and they have the wrestling so wwa is now if you ever get some free time check them out oh i definitely will i definitely will i'm always looking up on youtube checking out some different stuff and different promotions different wrestlers and I'm definitely going to have to check that out. And speaking of K- Kentucky's own wrestling, they they are starting getting everything worked up and ready to put content on uh, their YouTube channel, yep. which is great. Yeah. And one thing I want to ask now, you. I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, <laughs> I, there's, there's some big stuff on, on, the, on the horizon, I think, uh, for KZW. Oh, yeah. I... JJ wouldn't wouldn't really tell me what's going on, and I tried to pry and pick at him, and he wouldn't tell me. <laughs> he wouldn't tell me. So I'm I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely protecting gonna sit back business, and watch. Man. Protecting the business. <laughs> yep, protecting it, protecting it. Definitely, definitely protecting it. And that's one thing I want to ask you about is what is it what is it like being in the Kentucky show wrestling? What is it like the atmosphere and everything for you, and just working working for that promotion. Well, with uh, KZW, Kentucky Zone Wrestling, um, I just recently started coming back to, you know, my home area, which is Kentucky Zone Wrestling, because I've I done the deal with the WWA. Right. Uh, and I'm still doing WWA. I'm, I'm still, I'm doing both right now. Uh-huh. But uh, always coming back to KZW is fun, because I know uh, so many of the boys in the locker room, and you know, I'm familiar with uh, a lot of the fans, and mm-hmm. it's it's just like homecoming or something, you know? It's, right. It's always right. nice to come home. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And right now, working in Kentucky Zone Wrestling, you you have any beef with anyone? Anyone have any beef with you? Uh, well, like I said, just coming back, um, we, um, <laughs> KZW decided to bring in uh, Chance Profit. Uh, he's a little bit of a, uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and say he's an indie legend, uh, Chance Prophet, and he's one of my, hands down, he's my favorite wrestler. Uh-huh. Um, I wrestled him about three years ago, and it was a great match. You know, of course, this was, I was still fresh, I was still, you know, green starting. Um, but they brought him in, and we got the team together, so you, you can only imagine how, how I felt going into a tag team match with, you know, my idol, my favorite wrestler. Right. And, uh, you know, we we got this match in the bag, man. Uh, he does this body slam thing. I think it was Michinoku driver, maybe. Uh-huh. Um, and then he just points for me to go up top to come off the top rope. You know, finish him off. You know, he's gonna let me get the pin. I'm like, oh, this is great. My favorite wrestler is just, uh, you know, he just hit his finish and uh, he he's signaling for me to hit mine. So I climb the top rope and I'm up there, and he does this taunt 
It's his signature taunt. He just holds his hand up and he says, hi. Well, he does that to the crowd and then he turns and looks at me and he says, hi, and face palm. I mean, just palm strike right to the face, man. Knocks me off. I fall straight to the, the floor. Not not the ring, not the apron, but the floor. Um, wow. And they were, they, uh, they were the battle royal later that night. And I came out as uh, entrant number two. And oh and behold, entrant number three was Chance Prophet. So upon my return back to Kentucky Zone Wrestling, I have found an enemy in my favorite wrestler, or what once was my favorite wrestler. Oh, man. Man. If he's viewing tonight right now, if he's viewing tonight, you have anything you want to say say to him i'm i mean i'm hurt again i mean it's, it's like it's, it's a, that's my idol you know that's my favorite wrestler but uh, i guess the old old saying holds true you know never meet your heroes so uh wow. i guess you know I'm, I'm 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 looking i'm looking for you chance you know i'm i'm not I'm not the green rookie that you wrestled two or three years ago. Um, I've I've learned a lot since then, and even more so, I'm I'm mad as a hatter now. So, you know, be be on the lookout because I'm 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 coming through every town that KZW's at, and I'm I'm going to look for you, and I will find you. Better watch out, Mad Hatter's coming, and he's mad as hell. <laughs> wow! Exactly. Hey, wow! Well, you better watch out. You better watch out, man. You definitely better watch out. Working in Kentucky Zone Wrestling, how is it working with and working alongside and working for Mister uh, Hurricane JJ McGuire? How's that like, man? Um, JJ is. Uh... Hands down, just a, he's all around great guy, man. He's a uh, very professional and extremely down to earth at the same time, and he just he's just fun to be around. And he, you can tell he he's super smart to the business. He, he's got a lot of knowledge, and anyone you know interested in the business could learn a lot from the guy. Uh, he, he's great. I mean, he's the you know, he's the owner of KZW, so I mean he's. I feel like he's about to do great things with it, like you and I both talked about. Uh, he won't, he won't let anything out. But uh, you know, he's uh, he's just all around a great guy, man. He he seems to know what he's doing. So that's that's good. That is the work with someone like that. And when he was down here last week, and he was here for the uh, podcast City network one year anniversary. A lot of people, man, was just so they heard he was coming and they showed up at the event just to meet him. And it was just fantastic. And he also sat in for my segment I did right there on at the event there for the Everett Lee show. He was there with me and my co-host, Chris Carnage, and he did a segment with us that you can check up on the YouTube channel. If you head over to Podcast City Network's YouTube channel, you can check out that segment there I did with the True Master of Wrestling Ring Music, Hurricane J.J. McGuire. You definitely check that out right there, that segment that me and Chris had with him. And, yeah, he's he's so great. I mean, so knowledgeable. He's He talked about a lot of things, and... It, he yeah, he's, he's been really, around. He's really, he's really knowledgeable. He really he is. is great guy. Mm-hmm. He is. He's seen a lot, and he's been with the been with the best. He's been with a lot of legends. And one of the stories yeah. I like he's is been around. yeah. I mean, all due respect, he's de- he's been around. You know, he, he he knows what he's doing. I think. Yeah, he does. He does. One one of the stories I like was when he was talking about being at an event and he was backstage there with uh, Savage and Hogan. And uh, I believe it was Hogan asked him, he said, hey, McGuire, how's the crowd look out there tonight? And McGuire looked and he said, yeah. He said, all the marks are in the building. They're ready to go. And then Savage spoke up and said, hey, McGuire, we're all marks. 
<laughs> I love that story, man. I love that. <laughs> it's so great, man. Just, uh, you know, just talking with him and just listening to him and everything that he's been through and seen in wrestling. Hey, fans. Here at Podcast City Network, we have a lot of great shows on all of our great social media outlets. PodcastCity.net. Facebook.com slash Podcast City Network. Hit that thumbs up. You can send a tweet to Podcast City Network on Twitter at Podcast City Net. Only on Podcast City Network. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. In ROH, NXT, or WWE, who would you like to have a match against that you have not wrestled in the ring with? Man, um, you know, I, I, this is where I'm going to sound like one of those uh, one of those guys who doesn't seem like he knows a lot. Uh-huh. But uh, I don't follow a lot of mainstream wrestling. Uh, like I really couldn't tell you anybody on the ROH roster. Uh, my friends are probably going to kill me for saying that, but. Uh, as far as NXT, I would love to go toe to toe with Aleister Black. He looks like a hard hitter, and I think that makes for a really, uh, really great match. So Aleister Black from NXT, and as far as the WWE goes, um, Balor, Finn Balor, uh, I'd, I'd like to go toe to toe with Jeff Hardy. Um, nice. I guess Sting counts. Sting. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, the Undertaker. Oh yeah, you can't uh, you can't forget the Undertaker, Aleister Black. Yeah, but I'd say Aleister Black is a really good opponent. He would be a really good opponent, though. You have to watch out for that black black mass. <laughs> you definitely have to watch out for yep. that. And he he's amazing in the ring. He reminds me of a cruiserweight man. He moves just like a cruiserweight at times, yeah. but. He's just so agile, and he is tall, man. He is tall just looking at him. <laughs> and Undertaker, that would that would definitely be a good one. That definitely would be a good one to step in the ring against. And, yeah, Jeff Hardy, another, another good one. And Balor, oh, yeah, the founder of the Bullet Club. I mean, the founding yep. member of that. I was thinking of the Bullet Club. Yeah, uh, AJ Styles. Let's add him to the list, too. Oh, yeah, the phenomenal. The phenomenal AJ Styles. What I like about AJ Styles wrestling is that it, no matter who he goes up against, he uh, basically it's like he adapts to that person's style. Oh, yeah. and he's, he's like a velociraptor, man. He's uh, he's good at adapting. Uh, he's Yeah, he's, he's a velociraptor, man. He's a... He just adapts to anything you throw in his way. He will adapt and overcome oh, yeah. anything. Yeah, he de- he definitely does. He adapts to anything, and he just does. A lot of people back a few years ago when he first came into WWE, he, when he had that match, I forget what pay-per-view it is off the top of my head. It was with Roman Reigns for the uh, WWE Championship. And... Basically, AJ threw everything that he could at Roman, and Roman was just a powerhouse. He made Roman look really strong, which was, I mean, great. Yeah, he, he really he, did. He made which him, Roman really needed that at the time. I mean, he did. In my opinion, he did. He did, and I just, I just hate the fact that you know he's you know battling what he's battling right now with that leukemia, but I mean, yeah. It, AJ brought the best out of him, and even even uh, a lot of people said that John Cena had really great matches with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens brought the, brought the best out of him. AJ Styles brought the best out of him. Brought their best matches they've had in years. You know, like Cena, yeah. Reigns, especially it's Cena. These, uh, it's these indie guys uh, going back to the Cena and uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Owens. I believe I believe it was those two that had the uh, promo where. Uh, um, I think Cena referred to uh, Owens as a kid, you know, as as a rookie or something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And then Owens reminded him, you know, he may he may he may not have been in the WWE as long as Cena, yeah. but he's definitely been in the business longer. And when you take yes. guys like Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, and even Finn Balor, you know, Prince David, 
going back to the indie scene, mm-hmm. those guys they they've honed their craft, man. So by the time they made it to the WWE, they're you know they they know what they're doing. Yes, yeah, they they definitely Nakamura, know. Shinsuke Nakamura, Seth Rollins, those guys that you know they've been on the indie scene that you know they've learned a thing or two. They they're not homegrown WWE guys. They they've been around the block. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely, they definitely do. They, they know what they're doing. They definitely know what they're doing when they step in the ring. We, I like to add to that right there. The people you mentioned, we gotta add uh, Tyler Black, Seth Rollins. We gotta add him too. Yeah. And Samoa Joe. That would, that would definitely. Samoa Joe, yeah. How underrated Samoa Joe is. Yep. Yeah, he he definitely is. He definitely is. And. Tyler Black, what's what's crazy was the other day uh, we had the me and my wife had the WWE Network on, and I guess she had it on NXT or something, some old replays of NXT, and it was the Gold Rush Finals for the first NXT Championship, and in the finals it was Seth Rollins against Jinder Mahal, and that was one hell of a match right there, man. Seth Rollins winning the becoming the first NXT champion. That was yeah. That was, so he, uh, that was that was so great. He's done. Uh, he definitely earned it for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he definitely did earn it. It was it was great. And it's always nice to see guys like that make it and win the big one like that, you know. Or in his case, you know, the, the first NXT champion, or even with AJ winning the WWE championship, you know, it's always good to see those guys, you know, you know make it, you know, to mm-hmm. sum it all up, you know, they they made it, you know, because that's their moment that they've worked for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. I was. I was really happy about. I was really happy about when, uh, when Seth Rollins, when, when he was when he was bad. I I loved him. I I still thought he was great. And he, he at that time, right before he had that triple threat match last year at WrestleMania against uh, Finn Balor and The Miz. And when he won the Intercontinental Championship, I thought that was so great. I thought it was great. It's like he's captured all the titles, U.S. title, tag titles. I was titles. Say, now, was that when he became a Grand Slam champion. But, yeah, yeah absolutely. That was, that was it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was. It was. One thing I'm a little bit disappointed about is I wish he would have went after Daniel Bryan on SmackDown because I figured those two would tear the house down with their styles. Yeah. It, they would, but of course he had to go against Brock Lesnar, in, and I just yeah. wish he did not go against Brock Lesnar. I just wish that he would have went after Daniel Bryan, the uh, world's toughest vegan, and just basically just went after him. But of course, he, everyone wants him to slay the beast. They wanted him to slay the beast, take yeah. the belt off of Lesnar. And you know, man, I, I really thought Balor was going to be the one. I thought sure that the uh the Royal Rumble. I thought sure we was gonna see the return of the demon, mm-hmm. and I thought I thought he would be the one. But yeah. oh yeah. well, oh well, yeah, yeah. And you notice something about the Royal Rumble this year? They pushed a lot of the NXT talent, the talent that was in the Mayan <laughs> Classic, and they they pushed that talent, which I think is great. My wife said in the yeah. even in the women's, I was disappointed that I didn't get to see no legends like Trish Stratus, Lita. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Even in the men's uh, Royal Rumble, I was, I was a little bombed, you know. I didn't see any of the older guys. I always enjoyed seeing them make their way down to the ring. But, uh, you know, at the same time, I'm really happy and really glad for the uh, NXT guys because uh, they're investing in them. So, mm-hmm. it's good. It is. It is. They're they're trying. They're trying to. They're trying to utilize and push that talent. And I believe that's they need to. If they're going to push talent, honestly, I think that... They need to do what they did after Hogan left WWF back in the early 90s, mid 90s right there. I know it was really kind of bad time for for that for the company because with the steroid scandal and everything, but yeah. they didn't they didn't really have a big star and they they started pushing all this talent. They pushed Shawn Michaels, they pushed Bret Hart, yeah. they pushed Diesel, Razor Ramon. X Pac as the one two three kid. They pushed all these people, which I thought was great. This new generation that's been a, that's been around for a while and pushing that talent was great. I feel that they should push more of that talent. 
that they have now. And you know, I feel like that's what Triple H is doing. I feel like Triple H really has a uh, a really. I feel like he really has a great um, view of the future, if you will. You know what what he's doing at NXT with all these uh, NXT guys. And stuff. I feel like I feel like he knows what he's doing. You know, if if something ever did happen to Vince and um, you know Triple H did take over, I feel like man. We got no worries at all because that guy. I mean, you look what he's done with NXT. Oh yeah, he's he's turned it into a really good company with the, with the talent that he has. He's been pushing talent. And he's making really good stars, and I feel like the roster that was the the talent and the roster he had a few years ago was so great. I mean, you had Becky yeah. Lynch, Sasha Banks, you had Charlotte, and you had you had stars like that on the women's side, and then of course you had uh, you had at the time he wasn't there. Um, well, he's not there anymore at the company. You have Neville. Neville was great. Bo Dallas NXT oh, I, I like that. better. I so underrated. I know I like NXT Bo Dallas better than what I like now. The B team. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I just oh, I'm man. Not and into another it. team is uh, what is it? The uh, the Ascension. Like it seemed like they were destructive on NXT, man. They were just like yeah. incredible. But the minute they got to the main roster, it's like, what happened? You know, like yeah. I mean, it's like what the heck happened? You know, with yeah. with the Ascension, they were dominant. They de- they destroyed the revival. The yeah. revival, like like yeah. what, what are they doing with the revivals? Such, such great wrestlers. I mean, they remind me of um um. Arn Anderson and them, I mean, the way that their style is and everything, and it's just like, I feel like they drop the ball with a lot of guys like that. I know it gets thrown around a lot, but Dolph Ziggler is another one. He, he The ball's been dropped so many times. Like, that guy, man, he's he's like perfect. Uh, he's like Mr. Perfect. Billy Gunn and Shawn Michaels rolled into one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Ziggler's done a lot for the company, and I can't believe they, yep. I can't believe they've not actually let him. They put the belt on him. The guy's always there. The guy's always doing stuff. He's done some great stuff over the last few years. Why not put that yep. title? I mean, he was world champion, but put the WWE title on him, man. Put that strap on him yeah, and let him. Belt on. Yeah, put the company belt on him. Let him go. Let him freaking go and see what he does because he does so much. And I like Ziggler. I like his little changeup he did here in the last year, couple almost a couple oh, years yeah. now. Yeah, I love it. It's almost and, like he's uh, it's almost like he's took the whole uh, yeah I'm underrated, you know, and I'm not being treated right. It's almost like he's took that, embraced it, embodied it, and just ran with it because he's got this whole new kind of cocky, arrogant. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, the show off. You know, like he, he's embodied it, and he, he's made, he's rolling with it. You know, mm-hmm. he's he trying is. to grab the invisible brass ring as it's so so thrown around so much. <laughs> 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 talking about brass rings, man. That that right there. Talking about the brass ring, it reminds me. Becky Lynch, look at the brass ring she's grabbed, man. Oh my God, the man oh, yeah. gimmick. I yeah. love it. I love it. I saw Becky Lynch crutch. I saw her in 2014. Daytona Beach came. NXT came to Daytona Beach for a live event. And during that live event, they had a meet and greet right before the show. And at the meet and greet was a Becky Lynch. She was not on TV yet. No one really heard of her. She was doing live events. I met her a couple times when she came in before they put her on NXT TV. And I thanked her, and I I was told her I was like she's great at what she does, and I was entertained by it. And she was really humble, and she thanked me for being a fan and supporting her. And I took a couple pictures, and it's just so great. And just watching her from that point, 2014, meet and talk with her all the way to now, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, a lot of those people like her. She's like, and I've noticed a lot, like in the documentaries. I think it was a uh, Finn Balor documentary. Uh-huh. She was talking in here, and she's she seems like one of those that's like she's really thankful, and you know, she really appreciates everything that's been you know bestowed upon her. And I feel like she's one of those, one of the very few that will not forget where the, where they came from. You know, because a lot of them, they, you know, it kind of goes to their head, and they they get a little arrogant with the. Uh, 
the uh, the fame and the you know superstar status, but she seems like she's one that will always give back to the yes. ones who supported her, like you know, like you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, she she definitely does. She definitely would give back and definitely just be. She's humble and where she's got to. Yeah, that's the word humble. Yeah, let's use that humble. She's mm-hmm. definitely humble. She definitely is. And you're talking about the brass ring. Just, I believe it was last week, it was her birthday. And I believe Vince McMahon tweeted out to her to wish her a happy birthday. And she tweeted back. I love her tweets on Twitter. She fucking was like, well, I'd like to have a pair of uh, earrings to go with that uh, brass ring that I've grabbed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's great. I loved it. I loved it. What are you what are you looking forward to for uh this year's WrestleMania? What's what what matches? What what are you looking forward to for WrestleMania? All the stuff that's going on around New York and stuff. I've I don't know if you've heard of everything that's going on with like ROH, New Japan doing the G one there at Madison Square. Of course you got WrestleMania and NXT. What are you looking forward to? Um, as far as WrestleMania goes, man, uh, I think I was reading an article about two weeks ago about a rumor with The Undertaker and Finn Balor, and I just think, you know, that that's, I've, I've, I've dreamt of that for like the past couple years since Balor came to the WWE. I feel like that would be the perfect opportune time to do a passing of the torch. Like, if we're talking storyline, gimmick, you know, the work, the story, I feel like that's the perfect opportunity for Taker to ride off into the sunset by passing the the magic, the mojo, the you know, what what's left of the dead the dead man phenom entity to the demon king. I feel like that would be a match that would that that would be the match. That definitely would be. Yeah. I would. I would have still loved to, to seen Sting versus Undertaker, but which, which we'll never oh, get yeah. because of Sting's injury. But I'd. I'd definitely like to see the Demon versus Dead Man. I'll tell you another one. I like to see. I like to see Aleister Black versus the Undertaker. Yeah. I'd, I'd or even like Aleister Black and Balor. I think those two would tear it up for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, they definitely would because they're pretty much familiar with each other because, I mean, Tommy and Aleister Black was over there wrestling in England. And, of course, Finn Balor wrestled over, over there in Ireland and I'm, I'm assuming England too. I'm probably off with yeah. my geography with a little bit with the wrestling history with him, but I'm sure they've <laughs> crossed paths before. I'm going to have to look that oh, up, no, actually. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they've crossed paths before in the in the past. I just got a text from Mr. JJ McGuire. And if anyone's uh. not seen it, that Mr. JJ McGuire, when he was down here last week, he cut a promo at Hulk Hogan's Beach Shop in Orlando, Florida. I happened to be tagging along with him and I was his cameraman for the promo that he cut. And he just got a text message from Mr. Honky Tonk Man, and he checked out the promo, and he wanted to say the Beat Shop promo was awesome. And KZW, all the way, baby. (laughs) Right on. Right on. Right on. And Crutch, you are the future of wrestling. Oh, I've heard that from Mr. McGuire sev- several times. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> yep, he just texted me that too, right there. I just looking at. It. Yep, JJ dropping in to say hi and what's going on in KZW all the way, yes, baby. <laughs> He's got a lot of faith in me. I, I, I appreciate him so much. Mm-hmm. He does. He does. He when he knows something is good, he knows it's good, and that's awesome. That definitely is. What what upcoming events? We're, since we're talking about KCW, what coming upcoming events does KCW have coming up? Well, um, I know uh, Saturday, February the twenty third, 
I think uh-huh. uh, KZW is going to be in uh, Williamsburg area, Williamsburg, Kentucky. Um, there will be Carnage, I think is the name of the show. Um, so, again, I'll be there. I'll be I'll be looking for Chance Prophet. I'm I'm looking for you, man. I don't know if you're going to be there, but I got my eyes open. And um, I know next month for the 30th of March, I think that's right, March 30th, they have their annual two-ring battle royal. They call it Double Danger. So that that's always fun. Uh-huh. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, they got two great shows coming up, uh, they, which they've been running every every weekend. They, they're, they're putting in the work, man. They're putting in the towns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they definitely are, especially this Saturday, February 9th, Love is a Battlefield for Kentucky's Own Wrestling yep. Presents Love is a Battlefield. I mean, you have the you have the heavyweight title match right there with Natty B versus Maddie B, excuse me, versus Chief Tomahawk. I got to remove my glasses here. I actually can't read the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta resize it there. Yeah, the poster's a little bit small there, though. But the uh, event, Kentucky Zone Wrestling presents Love Is a Battlefield this Saturday on February 9th at the Old Shopville Gym on 144 Shopville Road in Somerset, Kentucky. <laughs> Doors open up at 7 p.m. Bell time is 7:30 p.m. Ringside seats are ten dollars. Bleacher seats are eight. Children under five. Free emission. And now they accept major credit cards and debit cards. So you ain't doing anything in the area Saturday night, ladies and gentlemen, on February 9th, this Saturday. Head over to Somerset, Kentucky for Kentucky Zone Wrestling Presents Love is a Battlefield. That should be one heck of a match. I mean, card right there. You check more on Kentucky Zone Wrestling on Facebook and more announcements to come. From Kentucky Zone Wrestling all the way, baby. I want to thank you for coming on tonight here and chatting with me and talking wrestling, talking Kentucky Zone Wrestling and starting uh, with you starting out in wrestling to where you're at right now and what you're doing and I can't wait to see what you do next, Crutch. I cannot wait to see what you do next. Yeah, I feel, man. Just can't wait. Social media. You have social media accounts. Where can people reach out to you and see what you're putting up on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram, etc.? What accounts and where can people reach you on social media? Uh, well, I have my personal Facebook account, Jeremy Napier, and then I have the Crutch Facebook page. I also have Instagram, uh, Big Gun Topia. Don't ask me what it means because I'm not sure, but Big Gun Topia on Instagram and Twitter. I'm not on Twitter much, but same name, yeah, Big Gun Topia for Instagram and Twitter. Nice, nice. Again, thank you for coming on tonight. And before we close out, I've heard blast, man. Me too, man. Me too. I definitely, definitely do. I'm going to be thinking about that. Uh, what's a heel thing all night now? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to get somebody up with it, man. Keep it going. Yeah, to I'm going to have to. I'm definitely going to have to. Definitely going to have to. And I want to thank everyone tuning in tonight here on the live stream on Podcasting Network Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash podcasting network. And, of course, Everett Lee, myself, the Everett Lee. If you want to check out more, where you can listen to more Everett Lee Show podcast, you can check me out on the following. Be sure to subscribe and like and leave a comment and a rating on Stitcher. Everett Lee Show is on, available on Stitcher and on Lipson.com. Search Everett Lee Show. Leave a comment and share the episodes that is available in on iTunes. Hit up Everly Show on iTunes. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, 
and share that right there and the Everett Lee Show YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe to that right now for the latest audio podcast and content on there. And, of course, we cannot forget about our network that the Everett Lee Show is a part of, Podcast City Network. Over to podcastcity.net for the latest content such as the Everett Lee Show and many, many more shows that is on the network and more to come. 2019 is a big year for Podcast City Network, celebrating its run and start on 2019 for year two. So check out Podcast City Network on Facebook, Podcast City Network, and on Twitter at Podcast City Net. And ladies and gentlemen, be sure to check out February 17th. I will have with on the podcast i'm excited about this and i'm sure everyone else is excited about this she just had her last match on february 2nd i am talking about hardcore heather owens she will be on the podcast at 1 p.m eastern and 10 a.m pacific on twitch.tv podcasting network for the everett lee show i will have hardcore heather owens on We'll be discussing her final match she had on February 2nd and a lot more topics to come. So check out that right there Sunday, February 17th, the Everett Lee Show with hardcore Heather Owens, who is the now new war women's champion in her last match, her retirement match, capturing that title. And Friday night... Ladies and gentlemen, please check out myself and Mr. David C. Russell of Deathmatch Russell Podcast. He will be at Pro Wrestling After Dark 2, The Shit Show, on February 8th, 2019 in Vineland Moose Lodge in Vineland, New Jersey. He will be going live on Podcast City Network, Facebook page right there so be sure to check out who he will have with him on intermission and what he'll be talking about at the pro wrestling after dark to the shit show so be sure to check that out on this coming friday and that is it for the everett lee show ladies and gentlemen thank you crutch and thank you for everyone tuning in you're welcome no problem me turn down the volume a little bit (laughs) everybody share signing off thank you everyone for tuning in have a great night and we'll see you next week on another episode of the very least show peace